Hi guys, it's Sarah here from sarahstexturecrafts.com. I just wanted to share with you um, some of the new yarns that I've been working on for a shop update, which will be Thursday the 5th of January over on the website. So uh, stay tuned and I will tell you all about it. Here's the big pile of yarn I was telling you about. So we've got lots of new colours in there. You can see some real saturates in there as well as some pastels. So something really nice for spring I hope. Um, now to bind and tag all of these and skein them and then I've got another pile of a similar size to do. Wish me luck. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the yarns and you're seeing a different angle to my little craft room today, which is a bit of a mess post Christmas. I need to clear it up. Um, but I wanted to show you these yarns and um, try, if I can, to get some decent colour so you have an idea of what's coming up in the shop update. At the end of this, what I will do is I will put a um, collage of all of the um, pictures of the yarns going forward so you'll get a much truer idea and you'll know what the names are so that you can reference that for when you pop onto the website. So I'm going to start in no particular order with the four ply and this is Turkish Delight on finest four ply so that's my Falkland base and I'll start with a Falkland base I think. Um, so it's a little bit washed out in areas but you can see as a semi-solid that you do have areas of lighter and darker saturation and that's what you're going to get from, from these yarns in this update. So Turkish Delight is a more sort of blued pink but uh, yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of it. Turkish Delight. Then we've got a very delicate orchid colour which looks mostly blue on screen but if I can show you an area um, you might not be able to see it but this is actually blue and this is a slightly pale lilac-y purple colour and they sit together so you can sort of see it from there they sit together to make this orchid colour again on four, finest four ply then we have sage which is a beautiful sagey green colour it's more like a blue green really um, then we've got ice cap which is a very um, a sort of baby blue if you like and that's got patches of very light and slightly darker blues to give you that semi-solid effect then we've got uh, mint which is pretty much what it says on the box there um, it's a beautiful soft green colour slightly darker than you're seeing there on screen we've got ocean which is a sort of denim blue then we've got country rose which is a more red pink colour um, and it's slightly darker than you're seeing on screen there that's yeah in the darker point of my hand that's slightly more true there um, but that's a beautiful soft rose I've done a batch of Wedgwood. As you know with Wedgwood you get a bit of spotting of, of different colours. So that's like a green there, there's a blue there and there's a bit of pink. Um, that's where the original dye lot splits. You can see like the pink there. But um, actually when it knits up it comes together and makes a really nice um, sort of textured blue. I've got sky blue which is slightly different to ice cap um, it's more of a sky blue um, again it's a bit darker than you're seeing on screen there but um, it's a very nice soft blue and you've again got the saturate differences so lighter and then with the darker there okay um, What have I got now? I've got Calm, which is a blended colourway, not a semi-solid. So I've got um, two colours mixed in here. So you've got like a, a blue colour and then you've got a slightly more purple colour with um, dashes of a lighter saturate area. That's Calm. 
and then Lagoon which is a much more sort of um, mid blue if you like. And then this is my favourite, Limeade. It is fantastic. It's a very sort of pale chartreuse colour and um, I think it would just work really well at picking up sort of um, either the odd stripe in a coloured shawl, particularly if you're going to do something like a Stephen West shawl. Um, it would also work really nice on, as edges. You know, you could edge your cuff and your collar on a sweater with it. Um, I've actually kept a skein of this for myself, so really excited about that. That's all the finest four ply. Then I've got a batch of Rambler four ply, which is my Blue Face Leicester and Masham. Now this I showed you um, in last month's podcast, and uh, I had it in in its natural colour, in the oatmeal colourway. So now I've over dyed it. So I've got Blackberry, which is varying shades of a beautiful red, sort of purple. We've got Fern. And we've got moss, and those are semi solids. And then we've got in blended, we've got rusted, so you can see it's all those kind of russety colours in different saturation levels. And then lost gold, which is varying levels of sort of golds and mustards, and then the oatmeal popping through as well, just so to sort of show that sort of tarnished effect that you get on on um, gold um, sometimes. So. Those are the blended versions, and I think they came up really well. So um, I'm looking forward to maybe seeing if I can pinch a skein of that to knit up. <laughs> and then this is a completely new yarn, which again is four ply, and this is my four ply boot clay. So let me grab that for you. This will give you real texture. It's 100% Falkland. You get 400 meters and you would knit it on two to four millimetre needles in, in the same way that you, you would any other four ply. Um, if I just pick up the piece there for you, hopefully that will start to focus. Yeah, there you go. So you can see you're going to get real texture with this. It's beautiful and soft. And I have to say, I, I get asked a lot of questions um, and sort of have requests for like mohair yarns and things like that. I'm allergic to mohair so I can't dye it, but I think this actually will make a really nice alternative. Something that's soft, something you know you're gonna be able to wear if you're not sure about wearing mohair, and it will give you that textural difference. So if you want to do a shawl with say, um, I'm just gonna pick up some colors randomly, uh, say, you know, a skein of my finest four ply and then a skein of uh, the boot clay you can do and you would get some nice textural differences but you would have that same soft finish so uh, I've done three colours for you this is flora so you've got those sort of raspberries and pinks through to purples and then the tealy greens for the leaves of floras flowers even. <laughs> this is dragonfly so this is a mixture of teals and um, sort of pale greens and blues and then I've done orchid on there as well so you might be able to see uh, the colour of orchid a bit better there. If I sort of show you this bit in focus there is area of um, different shades of blue and then you get this slight sort of lilac coming through and that's fairly good um, capturing of, of what orchid looks like. So yeah you've got three colours there and as I say I think they'll they'll go with um, quite a lot of the colours that I've done in my standard four ply range so I'm hoping that you will enjoy those. I'm just going to go and grab the DK yarns so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so DK, I've got, I'm using my Falkland DK, which as you know is a brownish um, base colourway, and I've over dyed it in three semi solid colours for you. So you've got black currant, and that is varying levels of um, sort of a reddish purple. Then you've got uh, Becky Falls. 
This is a very um, pale sort of teal colourway. And then you've got um, Storm, which is a sort of deep tealy colour. And I think all three together look really nice. Um, but again, they would work with um, some of the other colours. So, um, for example, if you wanted to vary your shawl in different, not only textures, but in um, also uh, weights of yarn. Because I know there are some patterns out there that use a bit of lace, a bit of four ply, a bit of DK and so on. Then you could, you know, put your purples together to, to form stripes or patterns, that kind of thing. Um, also there's you know like the fern and the teal of um, stool go together um, you know and you can go on and on from there so I'm hoping that I've I've brought you enough um, new colors but I'm really excited about this because it's it's been my first opportunity to really sit down and start to think about what new colors I need to bring into the range and all of the well the majority of these are completely new shades. Um, Wedgwood is a repeat, but I think that might be the only one that's a true repeat of a, of a previous colour. Beyond that, I'm working with my latest bases, a completely new base for you, um, and new colourways. So it's been quite an exciting update to prepare for you, so I hope that you really enjoy it. Um, all of that will be up on Thursday the 5th of January at sarahstexturecrafts.com. Uh, you will be able to find it all, all of those particular pieces under my yarn of the month tab but you'll also be able to find them under yarn under four ply and DK um, sign up to the newsletter if you want if you've not ordered before and you want to get your first 10% off um, coupon and keep up to date with the newsletter as well because there's going to be lots of exciting news and things coming to you this year I've got some really cool things in the works and lots of new colors and um, bases to share with you things like do you remember me talking about the self striping tests that I was I uh, was working on well I finished those socks so let me grab those for you so here we go <laughs> these are my little christmas socks i was so excited about these i can't tell you um really enjoyed making them and enjoyed dyeing them so as i said before which you may have seen in the last podcast i think it was um the width of these stripes is reminiscent of what a four colour stripe would be for me and I wanted to do it that way because I wanted to see what tiny pinstripes would, would kind of look like in my socks um, and I, I love that actually um, so if I were to do um, a two colour stripe it would probably be more the width of this so I've got a little bit more testing to do um, but once I've done that um, I will come out with a little range for you so subscribe to the podcast subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get all of that information as it happens but in the meantime please enjoy this shop update um, you know and um, come over and chat on the Ravelry boards as well if you're over there I've got a group called Sarah's Texture Crafts um, be lovely to see what you're working on and maybe we can come up with a couple of ideas of for sort of knit alongs and things this year so anyway I'm going to uh, leave that with you I need to go draft my newsletter to get this out to you then edit this and um, kind of get all of my sort of promo work for the month done so a uh, quick podcast I know but I just really wanted to bring you these I'm really excited about all the different colour combinations that you're now going to be able to have um, in my update so for example this one is limeade sage and turkish delight or you could go with a blue instead uh, maybe maybe a paler blue or a darker blue you see or you could swap that teal out for a mint and make that the light colour, the limeade the real bright colour and then have um, this one ocean as the darker colour. So there are lots of different shawl combinations I'm seeing in these as well. Uh, so yes, very excited, really pleased to bring these to you and I hope that you enjoy them. 
whatever you're doing I hope you had a really wonderful Christmas and I wish you the most wonderful 2017 and I can't wait to speak to you again soon cheers guys